Welcome to Hannah United Methodist Church's online worship for March 14th, 2021, the fourth Sunday of Lent. We're so glad that we are able to bring this worship to you through this uh, online medium, and we uh, hope that you are blessed by it, and that even though we are not together in person, know that we are together in the Spirit with the Holy Spirit of God. God is with us in all ways and all places. Let us praise God. Let us lift up our voices and our hearts in worship and experience all the goodness that God has in store for us. I would like to thank you for your faithfulness in giving. It's so very much appreciated. And remember, you can give online at hannahumc.org or by uh, mailing your check to the church. We so appreciate your continued support and faithfulness so that we can continue the ministry that God has called us to do in this place and so that we can reach into the world, strengthening our church, strengthen our community, strengthening our connection to God and neighbor. Amen. Let us now open our worship with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all the ways that you sustain us, that you keep us going through these difficult times, that you lead us onward and forward and upward. We pray, Lord, that during this time of worship that we might look up to you, look up to your Son, look up to all the good that you are doing for us and through us. We thank you, Lord, for this time, and we pray that your Spirit will not only touch us, but send us into the world that we might encourage everybody to look to Christ in these difficult times. We thank you, Lord, for all of your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. And let us now sing our opening hymn, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. Now as we come to that time where we gather our prayers together, our concerns, our worries, our fears, our struggles, our celebrations, our joys, remember that we are the body of Christ, the community that God has called together, the covenant community. Our prayers not only go out to God, but our prayers open our hearts, in our spirits and empower us 
that we can be the answer to the prayers that we pray, not by our, our power, not by our goodness, not even by our love, but because we embody the Spirit of Christ. So this day, let us pray for those who are sick, those who care for the sick, those who grieve, and those who comfort those who grieve. Let us pray for all who are weary and tired of all of this time of pandemic. Let us pray for Glenn and Rita, Janelle, Michelle, the family of Alan, Sandy, Stephen, Brittany, and Grant, Tony, Linda, Tom and Bev, Jim and Judy, Greg, Judy, Don, Susie, Bill, Buddy, Brenda, and Gloria. Let us lift these situations and people up to our Lord in prayer. Give them to God's care, but also be willing to be the comfort, to be the peace, to be the hope, to be the faith for those who need help in this day and this week. Let us pray. Glorious God, we thank you so much that you sustain us, that you lift us up, and that you have carried us through these difficult times. We confess that at times our faith has grown weak, at times our vision has grown dim, and at times our love has lost its fire. But we know, Lord, that you are steady, you are constant, and even as we fall short, you never do. So we thank you, Lord, for your sustaining grace, for your sanctifying grace, for the power of your Holy Spirit that holds us together and that overcomes all difficulty all conflict, all brokenness, and all illness. Help us, Lord, to look to you, to set our eyes and our hearts upon the vision that you show us and set us to be witnesses in the world that all people can look upon your Son and find hope, find healing, find life through the Spirit of Christ the Holy Spirit, our only hope in any time, good or bad. We pray especially, Lord, for those who are close to us, who are suffering. We may often not know how to help them, but we know, Lord, that you know how to help them. So we offer ourselves to be your ministers in the world, to proclaim good news, to sit with those who hurt, to comfort those who mourn, and to bring wholeness and healing and hope to those who are broken in mind, body, or spirit. We thank you most of all today, Lord, for your Son, Jesus Christ, who was lifted up on the cross. Help us never to lose sight of not only the sacrifice that Christ made for us, but of the victory that Christ has over all of those things that would separate us from you and from each other. We are so grateful, Lord, that even in our weakness, Jesus is strong, that even in our brokenness, Jesus is whole, and that even in our feeling wayward and lost, Jesus knows the way. And so we gather our voices together to pray as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scriptures today are from Numbers chapter 21, verses 4 through 9, and John chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. Hear the good news of God through these words of scripture from Numbers. They traveled from Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea to go around Edom, but the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There is no bread, there is no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people, and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. The Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, they lived. And from the Gospel of John. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Show us your presence, Lord. Help us to focus on you in this time and in the days and weeks, months and years to come, so that we never lose sight of your presence. We never lose sight of your promises to us and to your creation. We give you thanks, Lord, for this time in your word. We give you thanks, Lord, for your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. So on today, the fourth Sunday of Lent, where we have been talking throughout Lent about the covenants that God has made with God's people, the covenant that God made with Noah, where he promised never to destroy the world again through flood. And the evidence for that, the reminder for that, what we call a sign of the covenant, was that God put a bow in the sky, a rainbow, so that whenever we see that, we are reminded that God remembers the covenant he made with all the world. Not to destroy, but to save. And two weeks ago, we talked about the covenant that God made with Abraham to make many nations that would all look to God, descended from Abram and Sarai, or Abraham and Sarah. It was a covenant to establish a people, many peoples, who would know and seek the Lord and be a witness to the rest of the world of God's grace. 
God's love, God's power and holiness. And the sign of that covenant was circumcision. And then last week, we talked about the covenant that God made with Moses, the covenant to take of all those descendants of Abraham, one clan, one family group, and make of them a people, a nation, who would be set aside by God, which is the meaning of the word holy, to be set aside by God, to carry the word of God to the Gentiles, to carry and remember the saving activity of God on our behalf in the world. And the sign of that covenant was the law. The law that shows when we stray from the covenant. The law isn't the the, um, requirement to be in the covenant. The law describes what the lives of the people who live by the covenant will look like. Because when you embody God's word, you embody all of the law. And we were reminded last week that Jesus taught us that all of the law and everything that the prophets said boils down to love God and love neighbor. Now this week, we aren't talking about a specific covenant but we are going to focus on another sign of that covenant. And we begin in the Sinai wilderness. Shortly after Moses led the people out of Egypt, and the people were crying out to God to deliver them from slavery to the Egyptians. But once they were delivered, they found themselves in the wilderness in the desert, a place where there was no water, where there was no food, and where they were frightened that Pharaoh's army could still track them down. And despite the fact that God had heard their cry and led them out of Egypt, they grumbled and complained. And despite the fact that God had led them through the Red Sea, They grumbled and complained. And in spite of the fact that God had promised them to care for them and love them, they grumbled and complained because they doubted the goodness of God and they doubted the word of Moses that came from God. In our own time, we were also journeying through a wilderness this wilderness of the pandemic. And and the truth is, even without the pandemic, we're in a wilderness of a world that often seems hostile to our values, a world that seems to embrace sin and live in the darkness, as John said in his gospel passage we read. We're not so different from the Israelites because we find ourselves in a situation where we don't know the way out. We don't know the way forward. We don't know what lies ahead. We, like the Israelites, wandering in the wilderness, fear. We, like the Israelites, wandering in the wilderness, wonder if we're going to be taken care of. We, like the Israelites wandering in the wilderness, wonder if there is safety. We wonder if there is a future and a hope. Or have we found ourselves here in this wilderness, especially the wilderness of the pandemic, only to die as a people, only to die as a church, only to die as the people of God? Now, hopefully, We all trust that our individual salvation is secure. But yet, as we look at our families suffering, we look at people who have lost work, we look at people who have become sick, we look at people who seem to be fine, and there's all of these wilderness situations around us. And we too fear. We also doubt. We also grumble. The Israelites 
grumbled and complained because they had forgotten or they did not trust or they did not believe that God's promise to deliver them from the horrors of slavery in Egypt would be made valid, made real. The path to the promised land was a difficult, long, and arduous one, made longer and more arduous by their grumbling and complaining, by their idolatry and their turning again and again back to their old ways, back to the ways of the world of Egypt. And so God needed to get their attention. And God sent snakes, serpents, poisonous serpents that would bite them. And many people died. And if they didn't die, they suffered terribly. Now, I'm not going to go so far as to say that God sent the pandemic to get our attention. But there certainly is a very close correlation between the serpents in the desert and the virus in our time. And the people who had been complaining about Moses' leadership, in desperation, they turned to Moses and asked him to plead with God to take the snakes away. And that is what Moses did. Moses prayed to God. And God said to Moses, Make a snake and put it on a pole and put it up for the people to look at. And if they look up to the snake when they get bit, they will be made whole again, healed. So Moses did that. And the people continued to get bit because God did not take the snakes away. God gave them a way through, a way out a way to be unharmed by the snakes. Do you see the connection with our time? We have this pandemic that even if we don't get bit by the virus, in order to care for one another and care for each other and to try to bring this thing under control, we've had to live like we were in the wilderness. We've had to deny ourselves of so many of the things that sustain us, the spiritual food and water. And we detest what we've had to do, just like the people, the Israelites, detested the food that they had. But God has already provided the way out, the way through, the way to heal us and to make us whole, the way to give us hope as we journey toward a better life. Now, like the Israelites in Sinai, we long for the world that we knew. It wasn't Egypt, and we weren't in slavery. But the world that we knew before the pandemic was still far short of the world and the life, the kingdom that God has promised us in this life, that life abundant that Jesus talked about. And it was a far cry from the glory and the peace. It was okay, but God wants so much more for us. And God wants so much more for the people around us who don't know the good news of Jesus Christ the way we do. But God has also provided a way to remind us of God's eternal, never-ending, never-failing care. And as John tells us, just like the snake on the pole in the wilderness, that when the people looked to it, they were reminded of God's healing power, and they were healed. Jesus was put up on a pole, a cross, to show us that God has not abandoned us. God will not abandon us. God will not condemn us if we just look up and believe. If we look up, we will live. 
and the difficult times. We are called to look to the sign of God's love, Jesus Christ. When we look to the cross, when we look to Christ on the cross, when we look to the empty tomb, we are healed and made whole because we can again believe and trust and obey. God has made a way for us. God has a plan for us. And it's a glorious and wonderful plan. And we don't always know what the next step is. But if we look up to Christ, we can be assured that God's plan is good. That God's plan is good for us. And there is no snake in the desert. There is no virus or pandemic that can tear apart God's people when we look to Christ. Jeremiah 29, 11 assures us where it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. In the wilderness that we are wandering in today, we need to know that God's plans are not to harm us, that God plans to give us hope, that God has a plan of a future for us and for our community and for the world. And the proof of that is the cross, for God so loved this broken world, for God so loved the grumblers and the complainers, for God so loved me, God so loved you that he gave his one and only son that we might have life. Not to condemn us, not to condemn anyone, but that all might be saved. This time in the wilderness, let it be a time where we can be renewed in our faith, strengthened in our faith, by looking up to Christ so that we may live. And I'm not talking about just live bodily. I'm talking about live the life of the Spirit, filled with the Spirit, displaying the fruit of the Spirit, living by the gifts of the Spirit to serve God and neighbor in love, as Jesus taught us. The time in the wilderness for the Israelites was difficult. There's no denying that. But throughout all of that difficulty, God provided manna. God provided water. God provided leaders. God provided a way through. And when the time was right, God led the people into the promised land. And God is leading us into a promised future. Not just in heaven when we die, but here in our lives now, filled with the glory of God, filled with hope, filled with the future as we live into the plans that God has for us. It would be foolish to deny the difficulty of the time that we're living in. It would be unworthy to deny that these struggles and trials have harmed us, harmed our loved ones harmed our relationships with each other, harmed our relationships with the world, and cut us off from so many things that bring us joy. But when we look to Christ, may we find the true source of all joy, the true source of all hope, the true source of all life and community, the love of God displayed on that cross, hung up for us to look to and find hope and faith, renewed love, a renewed spirit, and living in the promise of the future that God plans for us. Amen. So how do we look up to Jesus in this time? When we are constantly tempted to look down at all that's broken in our lives, to look at one another with suspicion, 
with anger in our disagreements, to live in the desert and seeing only the snakes. How do we look up to Jesus? Well, to live the call this week, it's looking up, not up at the ceiling, not up at the sky, but up at the glory of Christ and the life of sacrifice that was done on our behalf. And the way that we can look up is to work on our own relationship with Jesus. When we are hurting, pray. When we feel broken or harmed, turn to Scripture. When we don't know what tomorrow will bring, when our weariness seems like we can't go on another day, we work on our relationship with Jesus. We admit, confess our doubts and our fears and our hurts and our brokenness. And we offer them to Christ. We confess them to one another so that we can all be encouraged by the fact that none of us are in this alone, even though it has felt so very much like we are alone. Confess, study, pray, share, serve, and prepare. Prepare for the next leg of the journey. Prepare for what God has in store for us. I am convinced that God has something wonderful in store for our church, our lives, our community. To prosper us as a faithful and fruitful church. May our study, our prayer, our service, as we look up to Christ, seek not to go back to what we had before, but seek to find something more glorious, more holy, more beautiful, more fruitful and more faithful. As things improve, we will be working toward how to make our church, our faith community, stronger and more faithful, deeper in love with Christ, deeper in love to each other, deeper in service to the world. I'm calling it Reboot, Reform, and Renew. And the timeline for that is impossible to predict at this moment. But it will be a life of renewed discipleship, a life of strengthening our relationships with each other, and a life of joyful service in the world that transforms not just those we serve, but transforms us so that we all are looking up to Jesus, looking up to the hope, looking forward to the plans that God has already made for us to prosper us and to give us a future, a glorious and beautiful future. Prepare. Pray for, hope for, don't doubt, don't grumble. But if you do doubt and grumble, look to Christ and live. Let us pray. God of crucifixion and resurrection, we are in awe of the depths of your love, that you would go to such an extent to reveal your grace and mercy for the world as we rend our hearts, and as we look up to the symbol of Jesus' cross, may we understand the reminders of your abundant and life-giving love. Empower us to extend your love to all we encounter this week, especially as they feel the bites of the snakes that threaten us now. When they cannot look up, may we look up for them and help them to look up to your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. And let us now sing our final hymn, Beneath the Cross of Jesus. <laughs>
go about our lives in this wilderness time. Know that God is leading. Know that God has a plan for us. God has a plan for everyone. And know that we are the people of the covenant, the new Israel. We are the people who have been set aside by God to be God's witnesses in the world, to be God's missionaries in the world. And when the world is focused on all of the snakes and threats, all of the brokenness and hurt, may we look up to Christ. May we witness to what we see on the cross. And may we live our lives as witnesses of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. So go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit looking up so that all the world might see what we can see. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, that all who believe might have eternal life starting today. Be blessed this week.